Hello, my name is Patricia Palladinas, and I'm really delighted and honored to be part of this exhibit through the lens at the Riboli Center. And just a great honor to be here among all of these photographers and Joseph Riboli's work especially. Uh, thank you very much, Riboli Center, for including me. I'd like to share with you some of my pieces, some of the work that I have here at the Riboli Center. These are uh, five different birds, photographs that I have taken throughout the years. I was interested in photography because my mother used to tell me about my grandfather, who was a photographer in Ecuador, and he would travel on the trains to little villages, uh, remote villages and do portrait photography of families and I just remember seeing a lot of that work but I never met my grandfather. My mother used to tell me that I was a lot like him so that kind of inspired me. As I got into my 20s I did take a photography course at one of the local centers where I lived in Chicago, Hyde Park, and I learned how to print. Um, I love black and white printing, started printing my own work, found that the National Audubon Society was hiring an assistant an office assistant. So I went to work at this nature center down in Islip where I was assisting, but I was learning. And that's one of the things that I've always liked about uh, finding a job is somewhere where I was learning something. I happened to come upon these people who just taught me so much about the natural world. And that's one of the reasons why I now photograph um, a lot of wildlife and animals and just introduced me to this beautiful other side of Long Island that I was not aware of when I lived in the city. I started photographing birds, which I tell people is the easiest wildlife to, to see out there. You just open your eyes, you go outside, and there are birds all over the place. If you look a little closer, you realize how different they are. Uh, you realize that the white-throated sparrow is different from the house sparrow. And then you learn about a little background about them, and you realize that the white-throated sparrows are not here in the summertime like a lot of other sparrows are here in the summertime. I'll tell you a little bit about some other work that I've done. This photograph right here, during the pandemic, of course. In 2020, we tried to expand our garden and we started growing different vegetables and, and fruits. And this was one of the butternut squashes that resulted. This one really stood out in my mind um, and I kept it for a long time uh, on the side because I really liked the scarring that it had. The fruit was still viable, but it had that beautiful scar. And I was thinking, I really would like to photograph it. I really would like to do something with it. And that was the summer of 2020. But it wasn't until January of 2021 that I thought, OK, uh, there was beautiful light in coming in my attic. And I put a black background on it. And I just took it upstairs, and I decided to put it with the black background on the light and I played with it. It reminded me just of how difficult things have, had been throughout that period and how resilient we are. One of the photographs that I took with this, I called it the Love Heels because I ended up putting this um, needle through it and um, just thinking that we were fixing it. Then I added a few other things as you see the wing. This little piece over here, I've been playing with Photoshop and different types of filters. We were in Kenya and we went to visit a group of Maasai. They were going to show us their homes. Then it started to pour. Just the rain came in. You talk about the rains in Africa, this was just pouring. So we all had to run inside. We were waiting there for a long time and it just got too late and we ended up having to go. But during this wait, we were all inside with these people and, and talking about their lives and these children, you know, wanting to know who we were and where we were coming from. And I just thought being inside their home was just a beautiful experience. So this image, here is playing with filters because if you look closely there are patterns like brush strokes in there but I'm using Photoshop to get a painting from a photograph. So in relation to what I was talking about what how this uh, photograph makes me feel I found this quote actually a friend shared this recently and I'd like to read it to you especially in the times that we've uh, we're, we've been experiencing and it's a quote by Howard Zinn so to be hopeful the quote is to be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. 
What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act and at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents, and to live now as we think human beings should live in defiance of all that is bad around us is itself a marvelous victory. I wanna thank you for viewing today, and um, please visit my website, which is photographically.me, and you can learn more about my work, uh, see other images that I've, I've taken and shared there. I'm also involved with the Four Harbors uh, Audubon Society, so please uh, visit our website and come birding with us, come learn about birds. The exhibition will be up through April 11th, uh, 2022, so come anytime. Thank you.